Hi, everyone, and welcome to Heal Endometriosis Naturally with Wendy K. Laidlaw. Wendy has spent the last two years helping women with various stages of endometriosis to heal naturally after putting her condition into remission. After her own healing success from stage four endometriosis and adenomyosis, she's inspired to heal others, and her goal is to help some of the 175 million women know that there is another way other than painkillers, drugs, or surgery. This is the place to be for real talk with real people for real results so you can learn how to heal your endometriosis naturally. Please note that the opinions expressed in this program may represent options but are not a substitute for proper medical care. Before starting any new healthcare program, we recommend you consult with a health professional. Hey everyone, it's Wendy K. Laidlaw here and as always, I hope that this podcast finds you well. This week's podcast is called The Beasting of a Bully. So the past few weeks have been somewhat frantic and I have to admit I am exhausted, yet also strangely exhilarated. As you know, I published the second edition of my paperback book and also changed the title slightly to reflect more clearly that the book was about my own success story, how I ended my endometriosis naturally without painkillers, drugs or surgery. The first time I published my book back in 2015, I was petrified so fearful of being attacked, the retribution and being annihilated. I hope that this gives you some context to the tension and stress in my body and life at that particular time way back in 2015 when I published. Although I had put the conditions of endometriosis and adenomyosis into remission, I still struggled back then with terrible fibromyalgia, mitochondria dysfunction and chronic fatigue syndrome. What I did know back then was how desperate I had been wrapped up and suffocating in endometriosis pain and now that it was gone I had this absolute passion and drive to make sure that I shared what had worked for me. I reasoned that if what I wrote only had helped one woman or would help one woman then all that I had been through would have been worth it. I said to myself that I had wished if there had been one book like I was writing with everything in it in one place to guide me when I had felt so unwell. So that book was written and published, all from my bed, I may add. I had no money at the time and no budget to work with. I was so lucky to come across an amazing man called Russell Brunson, who would give me an opportunity to build out my own website and business on a budget from my bed. I started with nothing. One of his coaches called Christian, he was amazing and helped me, and he was literally heaven sent. He would have the patience of a saint, as he encouraged me to promote and market effectively my message into the big wide world. If you haven't realised already, I'm actually quite naturally shy. Putting myself out in the public eye is not something that I'm naturally comfortable with. Yet I would feel this calling and push and purpose to keep taking tiny ant-sized steps with the incredible support and encouragement of Christian. He became so much more than a coach and a friend when I had bouts of panic attacks, anxiety and insecurity about what I was doing, especially when big bullies and trolls appeared. Back then, it was astounding to me, the viciousness of them. I imagined if I'd actually saw them in person, that some green goo would become flying out of their mouths when they spoke. After the release of the first edition, I put it out to the universe and prayed it would help to inform, educate and inspire women to have a pain-free body like I had. I never imagined it would have the impact that it did and for that I'm so grateful. Grateful in that it has added further meaning to the disease that took over my life for decades and almost ended it. With each kind email I received, it helped to validate that I'd done the right thing to share my success story. I had fervently telephoned endometriosis charities and shared my success stories and protocols with them. One such charity, which I shall remain nameless, said to me when I called, well, we get women like you calling all the time and then abruptly hung up on me. I had called the General Medical Council and got ridiculed and mocked. I'd emailed my gynecologist and he ignored me. But I was thankful that I'd changed doctors and this new doctor was curious and open to at least hearing what had worked for me. He would then go on to use my ladle protocols with great success with his other patients. So very slowly but surely, I would journal about what to do to keep getting this message out. I felt like it was my calling, my purpose. It drove me. It felt bigger than me. 
because ultimately it was not about me anymore. What had happened to me, it seems, had happened for me. And my responsibility now was to share this important message of hope and healing. What I hadn't envisaged was the disinterest, disdain and outright toxicity from the very people that should care. They ranged from friends, family, work colleagues and some members of the gynecological medical establishment. I would come to realise that many were outright bullies exercising their will upon me or were trying to without considering or seeing me. So when some strangers spewed toxicity about what I was doing, it was devastating way back then. I even had some women who were part of the established endometriosis community outright attack me. Attack me and accuse me that I was only doing this for money. Attack me and accuse me for taking advantage of women who were ill. Accuse me of having immoral intent. And I remember this one lady having a, a, a toxic engagement with me on Twitter. And when I said to her, well, what would you have had me do? Just keep all this information to myself and not share it? She was silenced. Ironically, I've come to realise that when toxic people make statements like that, it is actually their projections, their inner thoughts, their feelings that they project onto you. However, at the time, it felt really upsetting and the nasty comments or posts would leave me reeling for days at times. Back then, I might have become almost physically paralysed in fear. Their toxic words digging deep and wounding me. Yet over time, I would come to realise that there are three types of people in the world, as Abraham Lincoln has said. There are immovables, there are movables, and there are movers. And it seemed that some women were immovables and felt threatened somehow and did not want to hear my story. I would come to learn to respect that and leave them alone, knowing that if and when they were ready to inquire about another way, then to reach out. I would make my paperback book available for free and just ask people to pay for the shipping. I make a loss on that. I would make it clear my intentions, where to get this information into the hands of women with a condition, to know that there was another way and to never, ever, ever give up hope. Because back then it really hurt my heart when I heard of beautiful young women or women of any age ending their lives because they saw no way out of the condition after multiple surgeries had failed them. I felt this eternal drive to get my story out, if even to help women make fully informed choices and decisions and understand the risks and side effects of painkillers, drugs and surgery. But it was about so much more than that. It was about inspiring and empowering. I talk about the phrase A-I-E-I-E -E -E often with my students. A standing for awareness, I for information, E for education, I for inspiration and E for empowerment. A-I-E-I-E. -E -E. As Endometriosis Awareness Month draws to a close, it is important to remember that whilst awareness is a good start, it is not the end. Awareness helps others understand about how debilitating the endometriosis condition is and maybe highlight to other women that pain with a period is not normal. But it is the latter four that are there for women with endometriosis to keep learning, to, to get to the root causes and to take back power and control. Awareness, information, education, inspiration and empowerment. Yet there are big, sad bullies out there that resist the tide of change. Close-minded people, for whatever reason, that seem to want to silence my voice, want me just to disappear. The recent promotion of the second edition of my book was a double-edged sword for me. In one hand, it would increase awareness for women with the condition that there was another way. It enabled me to update my, my story and also to add extra bibliography and notes at the end to, to validate the statements that I was making. But sadly, it also drew out the rats and other vermin from the sewers and the woodwork. These toxic people that have darkness and deep sadness in their hearts. People that are big bullies, spouting, attacking words that can sting like a bee. I recognise that it goes with the terrain and territory of marketing online, but it's still something I struggle with and find a challenge. In the past, the viciousness of strangers' words would have deeply wounded me. Now I recognise naturally their right of speech 
and feel a sense of sadness for them. I do wonder sometimes what terrible event or series of events that happened as a little child or growing up that caused them such bitterness and hatred to take up residence and flow in their body. I wish for them that they can one day put that toxic energy into a physical task and have it released from their body, mind, heart and spirit. Perhaps if they got out of their own heads, their own body and thought about others, that toxicity might disappear. I heard about a very sad suicide of a friend of a friend the other day. This man, he had the house, the job, the wife, the family. On the outside, all looked perfect, in inverted commas. Yet clearly inside, all was not well. I wonder what was the last straw or the final trigger that pushed him to feel that life was not worth living anymore. For me, I visited that place at several points in my life in the past. It took me a few years in counselling with a specialist in trauma to realise that it was the toxic, bullying nature of those around me at the time that almost pushed me over the edge too. This is why I talk about these things in the way that I do. And due to the increased attention surrounding the publication of my second edition, I also appeared in several radio stations, but decided to decline television at this stage as I recognise that I'm still growing and learning how to manage the increased exposure not only of my book, but to toxic toads. And these people come in their shades of grey. Some are extreme and extrovert and easy to spot. Others come under the guise of a snake-like smile, full of pretense, yet their intentions are not pure. They aim to bring down your guard and cause great harm. I know this because up until about five years ago, I was surrounded by those types of people, but had no idea. I didn't see them, I didn't recognise them for who they were, but more for how I wanted them to be. Then there are others who appear interested, yet have their own agenda, which is not yet clear, but my instincts are now on alert. I've been interviewed by a number of people in the past few weeks, and one particular person left me feeling almost violated. The questions, the tone, the disdain, and their lack of compassion was jarring. Yet continual exposure to the big wide world is inevitable if I am to keep sharing this message of hope and healing. Another bully that sounded like a man made a statement recently, she needs to be called out. Which is ironic, given I've poured my soul out in paperback and do so quite regularly in my podcast. I think these people underestimate women with endometriosis who follow me and are in my community. The vast majority of the endoboss women are determined, strong and highly intelligent and of course know a predator when they hear and see one. Sadly, there are large numbers of predators entering the endometriosis space. With more awareness in the news and media come the opportunists who wish to attack good people doing good work and fulfil their own sick and selfish agenda. As I say it, it is for me recognising their projection in their words to others that has been enlightening to me. They project their own inner sickness. Toxic bullies put out words from their words that reflect their own inner thoughts, feelings and intentions. It has been a very long road to unearth the real me that was buried deep down underground because of the bullying and toxic treatment. And I feel I have the tools and strategies to navigate and manage this world in a way that works for me now. All of me. Whilst I've never pretended to be perfect, I've always had a pure heart and intentions for the woman I serve and will do so until the day I die. I wish to leave a very secure and concrete legacy behind me so that when I do pass away from this planet that my message of hope and healing continues to live long after I've gone. I wish to ensure that no matter whatever toxic person says that I hold true to my story, I have zero pain or symptoms of endometriosis and adenomyosis and I truly believe that is worth sharing. I know I would have loved to have heard that when I was in the depths of despair with my condition. To have people say that it's impossible reflects their rigidity perhaps. But I have my own self, my body and my story and no one can take that away from me. Whilst I can accept that even if some of the toxicities from women with endometriosis and they are maybe sceptical or fearful, 
I wish them well. I wish them health. And I wish for them to find peace and happiness. Not to stay shrouded in bitterness and viciousness and attack. For that will prevent any healing taking place in their bodies. I watched an interesting documentary about feminists on Netflix called Feminists, What Were They Thinking? about the feminist movement in the 1970s. And what struck me was their coming together. And although I see myself more as a humanist rather than a feminist, I do think that some women need to wake up and stop being pitched against each other. Madeleine Albright, an old Secretary of State for, for America, said, women should lift each other up, not tear each other down. I see our Endemos community as a super safe place to lift and support each other up, to believe in each other, and keep sharing this message of hope and healing. And for the toxic toads and those bullies, yes, it's slightly unpleasant to experience the energy and the bullying sting of the words and the statements and the, the reviews. But please, if you're listening to this, please tune out, tune off and trot off elsewhere. I wish them no malice, but their lines of attack and argument have no substance, no intelligence, value or meaning. And if you are experiencing toxic people, then make sure to put in secure, protective measures and know that you have a right to remove yourself from anyone or anything that is bullying, harassing and or toxic in nature, no matter who it is, no matter what it is. Start slowly and do so by increasing your awareness. Explore in your journal various options that might be available to you. Slow as fast as you know, and you may feel emotions of anxiety and tension when you start to increase your awareness. But as you reconnect to the wiser parts of you, you'll start to learn to know your worth, to recognize your worth and value your worth. For to ignore it might make you ill. For me, well, I've established an incredible gatekeeper. A person for me who ensures I do not hear or see the toxic toads and bullies and their playground antics. I'm so very fortunate to have my own daughter and my son as part of my endoboss team. My daughter in particular ensures that I hear nor see nor read any toxicity, but only share with me what is working for you all as that feedback continues to feed me and drive me and keep me reaching out further and wider with my story and message. Whatever is happening for you in your life right now, and however you are feeling, remember to know that it will pass, and that you have the strength, and most importantly, you're not alone, for you also have the strength of the Endobos community behind you too. Until next week, to your health. Thanks for listening to Heal Endometriosis Naturally with Wendy K. Laidlaw. And I hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and rate us. If you're interested in learning more, you can download your top five jumpstart tips at healendometriosisnaturally.com and jump on the VIP email list. Remember to keep you number one for the world needs a healthy you.